Hi, my name is Jay and in 2022 I through hiked the Appalachian Trail and I'm going over all my gear and what I thought about how they worked out throughout my through hike. And today we're going to go over my food and water choices. A big concern everyone has is how they're going to carry their food, whether it's a food bag, ursac, beer canister. You see all sorts on trail and I decided to choose in an ursac. I had the white ursac almighty. It's the critter and bear proof version so it's rather stiff and it's heavier than the usual ursacs and honestly I thought it worked great. In fact for most of the trail I was perfectly happy with it except when it rained because of the fabric it kind of absorbs rain so when I hung it in a tree and I'd actually hang a garbage bag over the top and just loop these through a hole in the bottom of the garbage bag and that helped prevent it from getting super soaked although water did get in and the bottom soaked through and I did tie this onto the back of my backpack so I didn't have to put it inside my pack at all so after I got my food down from a tree each morning I would take it out and I would put it in my Dyneema bag so that was waterproof and uh, odorproof so that well not odorproof but it's kind of sealed and I would put the Dyneema bag in my backpack and I would roll this up and attach it to the bottom of my backpack just because sometimes it did get wet. The other downside because of the it getting wet all the time once we got to Maine there were several days it was just non-stop rain and well it stopped once in a while but it was quite wet it was super humid and then rain again it just kept raining so this just never got dry and at one point it started getting milk like mold oil mold or mildew all over it. In fact, you can kind of see white dots along here. It's uh, it's like moldu stains. Did I say moldu? <laughs> Mold stains or mildew. I'm guessing mildew. And there's even some in the neck area. You'll see little black dots everywhere. Some of the brown marks are mouse poop that kind of got soaked into the material. But you can tell it's gotten quite a bit of use. It's rather dirty. But there's little black dots here and there for more mildew. Especially over there. There's a bunch. But it's super moldy. I'll show you some pictures. But besides that, it worked out great. For me, I don't think any bears attempted to get to it. I don't think any critters attempted to get to it. Except mice on my very first night. I did put it in a bear box at the campsite. At the shelter. And there were reports of mice getting into their bear box. So I did use this instead of Dyneema bag, which I normally would. And in the morning I did see frozen mouse poop along the edges. So I'm glad I used this instead of Dyneema bag, just because my food was saved. And this older version, they have a Velcro strip that keeps all the critters out as well. But yeah, I never had any bears go at it, so I couldn't tell you how well it would withstand a bear. But I did follow their instructions and always tie it as high up in the tree as I could and I try to tie it as tightly to the trunk as I could or find a crook or some kind of knot so it wouldn't slide down as well. And I thought it worked out great. The big thing to do is when you tie it to a tree is make sure there's no poison ivy growing up. If you see hairy vines, do not tie this to that tree because it might be in for a shock when you're touching it and then you eat and it'll just be a bad time. So I used Ursac Almighty and I thought it worked great and I would carry it again if I went on another through hike of the AT or yeah or the AT itself. The other trails I would do is just use a Dyneema bag. It depends on the situation. Like in the Arizona trail there were no bears at all so I just used a Dyneema bag and I slept with it almost every night. My Dyneema bag was just a Z-Pax food bag. I did tape <laughs> it's falling apart a little that's actually pretty good it's still on. This is a reflective tape and that actually helped me find it a couple times if I had to get up really early in the morning or get my food again or hang some more stuff at night once it got dark. I hung it in like a cable, uh, bear cable and it was dark and I was looking around for it and this just reflects a head beam so well that you can spot where the cables are easily. And it really helps. I did have some other stickers here, but they kind of wore out. And overall it's in good condition because I treated it pretty well. And I did use this 
Anytime there were bare cables, I used this to hang it up just because it was waterproof and my food was already in it. Just remember, these little plastic clasps on these ultralight Dyneema bags are not the strongest. You can see they're quite small. So I did tie a little piece of bank line to the loop there and I use a carabiner and I would always double clasp the bag. First the plastic clasp and always the piece of string. That way if the clasp broke or got free it would have a secondary support mechanism. I did see in some of the bear cables they had hooks, metal hooks, and the hooks would just go right onto the clasps like that. And if it shook enough, I could see the force pushing in on the sides of the clasps and it would just snap. But unfortunately, with this backup, it won't fall. It'll just stay on the hook. So, it's, I'd say it's worth it for this tiny little bit of weight to have a secondary support system there. I also heard of other hikers that their clasp did break. So watch out. I think the bears have learned to slam on the cables where it ties off into the pole or a tree and they learn to do that enough and the bag will fall down. So if you can have a secondary support, that's the way to go. My spoon was the trusty old shiny polished head tokes long spoon. Long is necessary just to keep food off your hands as you go into the bags. And I use this everywhere and it's great. That's all I have to say about it. It's great and I'll keep using it for forever. And if I lose it or get destroyed, I'll buy another one. I cooked in freezer bags my whole time and I did have one of these Hyperlite food cozies. These work fantastic. Like I used to not use it and just use my Shema to wrap the Ziploc bag, freezer bag, and it would get a little cooler after 10 minutes or so. Cold, cool enough you could eat right away, but with this, Sometimes it was still so hot, like I couldn't eat it. I have to blow on it and just kind of wait. So it's amazing how well it works considering how thin it is. And yes, in case you didn't see my first, I guess my second, first video, um, I did catch this on fire on my first night on the trail. <laughs> but because it's just right there, it wasn't too bad and it worked, worked just fine. And I use it all the time, it worked great. Of course it doesn't work for freeze-dried meals because it's just a little too small for it. Just freeze, freeze your bags. But I love it and I will keep using this as a primary means of cooking on trails like backpacking trips. One bit of advice with the food. If you're skinny and you're going to start a through hike, you should pretty soon, within the first week, think about augmenting your food with olive oil because if you're skinny, you're going to lose more and more of that fat and you're going to start burning muscle as you need the energy. So I always use olive oil. I use butter in the beginning because when it's cold, the butter doesn't melt. So it works great. It tastes better, but it's higher cholesterol. So you might want to just go straight to olive oil. But I have found that the Gen bottle works the best. I double Ziploc bagged it every time. But I've never had it leak. The Gem 8 ounce bottle works perfectly. I mean, I don't know how it didn't leak at all, but I mean, the lid isn't super tight, but it worked out great for me. After a while, I got rid of one and got a new one and kept refilling that, but this one works great. There was another green bottle with a lid. I have used it in the past, but on the AT, it did leak on me. So it was just a mess. When they leak, it's a mess. That's why I always double bag it because the first bag will catch some of it and some of it might leak, but if you double bag it, you have a better chance of protecting all the rest of your food from this mess that will come out. So, but these gem bottles never leaked on me. Pretty good. They do sell them at Fontana Village, I found. So that was pretty nice. For my stove in the very beginning, I used a Pocket Rocket Deluxe. Uh, the reason I chose that, it's, it's a heavier stove than most people would want to bring but it was very cold in the beginning and I wanted something with a good regulator in it. And with that, no matter how cold it is or how cold the fuel is, the flame, the gas coming out of the top is a consistent pressure. So it doesn't, like a lot of times when it's cold, 
it might start out okay, but as the canister cools from the gas coming out, it actually, the flame will start dropping and you have to turn it up and it'll go up and down. It's just really kind of annoying. So I like a regulated stove because once you turn it on, it just works really well. The alternative I found, uh, I saw one person, I think Ponzi, he had it. And I've seen other YouTubers as well have it, like Not Today. They have a rubber band and a copper plate that goes from the fuel to the flame. So as the flame heats up the copper plate, it kind of heats up the canister just to keep it working well. And that's a great option as well. That would be for, I'd say, even colder temperatures than I had. But I was using my regulated stove down to 15 degrees, no problem. So I thought it worked great. Once it warmed up, I did switch out to a, you know, the typical BRS tiny stove. And I used that for the rest of the trip until Tina caught up and then she did all my boiling for me. But um, yeah, the Pocket Rocket Deluxe, I thought it was great. It's a little more wind, it's a lot more wind resistant than the BRS. So you have to protect the BRS more, but definitely a good stove. And I would definitely take it again if it was cold weather backpacking. For water, I did carry one of these Evernew bottles with me. This was my dirty water bottle. I still have it, but I think I'm gonna throw it out after this little video. It's quite dirty. I'm sure it smells because I haven't washed it out in a couple of months now. But I always kept this with me as extra water carriage, just in case you need to. And I think even on the AT, there are parts that are dry enough that you should carry a little something to carry extra water. It's always, it's nice to just have. And I carry two Smart Leader bottles. So it's nice having a little extra because you never know exactly when you might need to carry more water. And it would be a bummer if two liters was the maximum you can carry at any one point. So this worked out really well. And uh, I put my dirty water here, put a Sawyer on top and a Sawyer squeeze. And I used a blue connector to connect to a water bottle. And I would just squeeze it and that worked out really well. In the beginning, I did use the Aquamira drops. And the reason I chose that was because on the Arizona Trail, I slept with my filter all but maybe two nights because it was always below freezing. And I just got sick of sleeping with stuff all the time. And it's cold and you always had to put it in a bag because the Sawyers don't seal up. So I didn't wanna do that. And plus it only takes one time when you're careless and it freezes up and then it's kind of ruined because once it freezes, the ceramic filter will crack and things can get through and you'll get sick, although you're thinking you're okay. If you're lucky, you may not get sick. It's all, you know, Russian roulette with water. But, so I did use an aqua mirror in the beginning. If you're planning to do that, you should read the instructions and understand its weaknesses. Like when it's cold and you put it in water, you can't drink it right away. You have to wait 30 minutes. So if you're, no matter how thirsty you are, you put your drops in there and you gotta wait 30 minutes. So it's not the best. Also with Aquamira, you have to mix the two bottles and let it for at least five minutes when it changes color to like a yellow, and then you could use it. So if you actually got to water source and you're doing that and you follow their directions and you mix it in their cap, you have to sit there for five minutes and that's one liter. So what I did every morning, I would pull out my little eyedropper bottle. It's like a empty eyedropper bottle a viewer sent me, just a clean one. It's not for eye drops, but you know, a dropper bottle. But I would put the same number of drops in each and just fill it up. So I would say like if I knew I was gonna filter four liters of water, I would fill 28 drops, 28 drops, and then just kind of shake it up and then let that sit. Once it's mixed, it's still good for, I'd say days after. So it's not, it's not bad to pre-mix them. So when you get to a water source, you just pull out the dropper put in your, it would be then 14 drops per liter, I believe, and then shake it up, open the lid a little bit, shake it up some more so some of that water with the aqua mirror gets in the cap, like in the threading, so it kills everything in the cap and the threading. Close it up and then put it away and drink it some other time because yeah, again, you have to wait 30 minutes. But yeah, the aqua mirror, I think in the beginning, up until Virginia, all the water sources were really clean. There were only a couple ones that were iffy, where right? I found things floating around in the water, but for the most part, it's pretty clean. 
used Aquamira and I was I felt pretty good the whole time and then after Virginia or so I did buy in Hot Springs just a little bit before Virginia and Tennessee I did buy a Sawyer Squeeze and then I carried that for a while until it warmed up enough and I decided to use that and then I did have to sleep with it a few times but overall not that much and Aquamira's I got down to 15 degrees and they didn't freeze they work just fine if you're worried that they're gonna freeze a little I always kept it in my fan, uh, my hip pocket, which is closer to my body, and that kind of kept it warmer. So, but Aquamira's I think are a great option in the beginning. I did meet someone that was using it towards the end, but some of the water sources are so dirty. Like after it rains, all the dirt just kind of collects in the streams, and when you filter it, you need a pre-filter or something, otherwise you're just drinking dirt. So, I I like enjoy the Sawyer Squeeze after that, and. I've heard some people say they flush, back flush their squeeze each time they're in town, but I do it after every couple of liters or every time I'm at a water source and I'm done filtering my water, I back flush each time. And I think that was just a habit I got from the Arizona trail, but just because the water was so dirty. And it just makes the filters work better when you back flush it consistently. So that was pretty much my food and water gear. Again, I did do mostly freezer bag cooking, and I actually enjoyed that because I don't have to clean my pot, that's number one. Number two, I don't have to worry about any kind of bacteria buildup in my pot if I didn't clean it correctly. And then I also have little extra garbage bags. Each time I eat out of one, I have a garbage bag. So I only use quart size bags for garbage. I never had to use a gallon size. Some people wind up using a gallon. I just use quart size, and if it fills up, I get another quart bag and fill it up. And I also use a one of those basically for um, my wet wipes because I when I went to the bathroom I would use wet wipes to get it nice and clean but those don't degrade biodegrade so I put them in little quart size leftover bags and that was how I carry those out all the time so they make great garbage bags and I'll, I'll continue to use freezer bags as, as long as I can and I did buy freeze-dried meals maybe for one day out of every leg just so as a special treat and it has a lot more protein than the other things I ate so I treated myself every now and then but largely it was ramens and nor rice sides I found the pasta sides don't really cook that well in the heat cozy during freezer bag cooking and also when you do freezer bag cooking, you don't necessarily want the water to be full on boil. You want it to be just under and that doesn't cook the pastas very well. So rice pasta sides, like rice nor sides, uh, lots of ramen, especially shin black ramen if you can find that. It's a little pricier than normal ramen, but it's delicious and there's bone broth in it. So, I mean, on trail, that's heaven for me. But, and a lot of cookies and bars and things like that. but. Overall, yeah, that's how I did it. Um, if I did have extra food I couldn't fit in these bags, I would put them in a gallon bag though, or double them up on a gallon bag. I did carry a Tokes Titanium 750 milliliter pot with me the whole trail until Tina caught up and I got rid of that. So she had, I used, basically used her stove and her pot. She, she had the same pot as me. And then we just made water that way, but uh, or boiled water that way and made meals in our freezer bags, or at least I did. So with freezer bag cooking, I always use the Hefty freezer bag, quart size. It doesn't matter if it's a standing one or flat, but the Hefty ones seem to be the strongest. As of now, it could change. Companies often change how much plastic they use just to like save a tiny fraction and then it builds up over you know millions of products. But the Hefty storage bags, they're super weak. They could lead, I've used Ziploc, freezer bags. They feel a little flimsier, but so far they've been okay, but I've been more careful with them. But the hefty freezer bags, for me, seem like the most durable. You'll always, well, it's never gonna be an option all the time, or you won't find it everywhere you go. So when you find it, get some. But you know, like some places will just have generic freezer bags and generic storage bags. They're just not the best. Um, try to go freezer bags, not storage bags, and then Try to go Hefty, Ziploc, and then maybe some other brand in, in that order. But Hefty Freezer, I thought, was the best option and worked out really well. 
Another bit of advice though, if you've gone backpacking, you know that if you put a little fuel canister inside a pot, the bottom of the fuel canister will rust on the pot because it's made of steel. And if there's a little bit of moisture on the bottom of the pot, it kind of just, just makes it rust. And I've seen a lot of pots where they have like a rust string on the bottom. The easy way to avoid it is save the plastic cap that goes on the top of the fuel canister and put the fuel canister in upside down in your pot. Most of the moisture will be on the bottom. So the top, the bottom of the canister will be facing up and it really won't get that wet. So it doesn't rust. And of course you always need to use, I use paper towel. Anytime I was at a hostel, I would grab a new paper towel or try to remember to do it. But you put a paper towel on the pot and you shove the canister in that prevents it shaking a lot when you're walking around. Every step. Some people use bandanas, that works as well. Just anything soft that'll prevent the shaking. Otherwise, when you're walking, it just kind of rattle and it gets annoying. And it helps control the moisture so it doesn't rust. Although again, if you put it in with the bottom of the canister facing down, it will still get a little moisture because even the bandana or paper towel get a little moisture from the pot if it's not 100% dry. So that may still cause rust. So just save that little plastic cap for the canister, put it upside down, put it in there, and you all have a nice concave top and you can put your stove and your lighter, things like that right up there. And that's the way I've been doing it ever since PCT and that's the way I prefer. That's it with all my water and food use options on the trail. That's the way I through hiked and worked out really well for me. I used similar system on other trails as well, except on this trail, I try to reduce weight by not having a, a bigger, like a CNOC bag as well as an extra storage bag. On the Arizona trail, if you're hiking the AT, be happy you don't have to have four smart leader bottles, a two liter, Canock bag and I always carried one of these as well so I actually had capacity for eight liters on trail I only went as far as seven liters a little under seven liters but eight I had the capacity for just in case so be happy you can get by with two smart water bottles and maybe a two liter bottle and that's really all you need as long as you collect that much when you hit a, a source but yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot easier water-wise on the AT. Again, thanks for watching everyone. You all take care. Everyone out there that plans to hike in the future, I wish you the best of luck. And my only advice is just enjoy the moments that you're out there because it'll, be, it'll end and you'll be sad that it did. So just enjoy, enjoy it all. Don't be in too much of a rush. All right, thanks.